Hello everybody, I recently watched Lex Ellis's video review of Lapidus Pour Homme in which he said that if you call yourself a fragrance enthusiast and you don't own it, then he's gonna come and punch you in the face. I think that's a bit much and I don't think that we should have to blind buy such a polarizing scent as this one sounds like it is, uh, just because it's got that big reputation as a powerhouse scent. So I don't think I'm gonna be buying it. Hello. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to order one bottle of Ted Lapidus pour on, please. Thanks. Ted Lapidus was a French fashion designer who was born in 1929 and passed away in 2008. He was born in Paris. Lapidus is widely credited with introducing a military and safari look into haute couture. He is credited as the first designer to have put military style shoulder straps on both male and female clothing and with making blue jeans part of the mainstream of fashion design, something we now take for granted. He was an apprentice with Dior, started his own fashion label way back in 1951 and came to prominence in the 60s when celebrities such as Bridget Bardot and Alain Delon started wearing his creations. He famously designed the white suit that John Lennon wore on the cover of the Beatles' Abbey Road album. In the year 2000, the Lapidus label stopped producing high fashion designs and is now primarily known for fashion accessories, watches and fragrances. Lapidus Parom is an oriental fragrance for men. The perfume here behind this one is Martin Gras. I was lucky enough to meet up with him for a brief interview before I shot this. I asked him how he and his assistants reacted when they realised they'd created this powerhouse beast mode fragrance. He knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Hello everybody, so today we're going to be having a look at and a sniff of Lapidus Pour Homme by the House of Ted Lapidus. Okay, so uh, this one was released in 1987 by the House of Ted Lapidus. Uh, we would imagine it's been reformulated since then, but it still has the reputation of being a real strong, maybe beast mode kind of scent in the 80s powerhouse mold. So the box that it comes in is really nice. Uh, but a little bit dated looking, I guess you could argue. It's got something that resembles a, a wave or something like that. It's not hard to make. It's a bit abstract, but it suggests movement and dynamism. And that's kind of not surprising because it's a very masculine scent. Let's have a look at the bottle. Really interesting bottle on this one. Okay, well, it either looks really fantastic if you like 80s things, or it looks really naff and, and dated if, if you don't. So it, it's not see-through at all. And this colour, grey... Kind of reminds me of uh, the way some sinks and bathtubs used to be in the 1980s when I was a kid growing up. So people, it became fashionable to have a sort of grey colour or light blue or green coloured sinks and stuff in your bathroom rather than white. Uh, and this resembles that a bit and it really fits in with my memory of the 1980s bathroom. You could easily see this sitting on maybe your friend's dad's uh, bathroom shelf or something. Uh, it's got some nice grating here with silver in between so it's a pretty sturdy and good bottle uh, but it's very much to me reminiscent of the 80s it seems rather dated but maybe in a good way so i'm going to put the notes on the screen for this one right now there's too many for me to sit here and list them but um i'll talk about some of them some of the notes in this one then uh, we've got the typical bergamot and lemon but it's not really a fresh scent so uh, quickly we, we will move on to some of the other more interesting and significant notes in this one so we have lavender we've got oak moss patchouli, incense is listed, also honey and tobacco are listed in there, uh, and we've got oak moss and musk, so there's a lot, uh, and there's also sage. 
So there's a lot of very masculine notes, heavy masculine type notes, things like oikomostomy, patchouli, although it used to be associated with hippies in the 60s, when it was used in fragrances, I think it gives off a very strong masculine vibe. Lavender is a typical barbershop type note, and the musk and the sage, again, tend to be somewhat animalistic notes to me. So it's got a lot of those kind of macho animalistic notes in there, a little bit of freshness, some sweetness and fruitiness, because the other note in there is pineapple. Uh, and nothing like Creed Aventus or anything like that, but there is a certain fruity sweetness in this scent as well. There's also juni juniper berries, but it's all very well blended in together. Let's see how it actually smells. Well, I've actually sprayed this one. I put two sprays on this hand and then realized two sprays in one place with such a strong scent probably wasn't a very good idea. You wouldn't do that normally in, in real wearing. So I did one spray on the left hand and uh, I'll do, I'll just give one more spray as well now uh, on the front of my hand just so I can get the top notes. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, okay, the opening, if, if I'm honest with you, it's a bit much. It's very rich. It is a little bit reminiscent of other 80s powerhouse scents, things like Koros from Yves Saint Laurent released in 1981, Drachan Noir, maybe even Azaro Poron, Paco Raban Poron. It's very strong, maybe even uh, Chanel Antaeus. If you like those kind of scents, you might be interested in this. So the opening, a little bit overpowering, a bit too rich, but it does quickly dry down. And it's in the dry down that this one gets better and better for me. So what you're left with is a smell that's quite difficult to describe because there are so many different things going on here. This is only a first impressions because I've only had this since Friday. Um, we're on Monday now as I film this. So I've only had it a few days, uh, but I have given it some wearings and, and formed some initial impressions. What I get from this is a very masculine scent a scent that does throw you back to the 1980s. It could smell a little bit dated, but if you like old-fashioned scents, you're gonna like that. Performance has seemed to be really strong. It's really long-lasting. It's one of those where I've, I've even um, been for a run and had a shower and then sniffed where I've sprayed it, and it's still there to some extent. So it really clings to your body and stays around, and it really develops as time goes on. The opening is a little bit too many notes competing and you're, you're just a little bit confused as to what you're you're smelling but as it dries down what you're left with is a bit of a barbershop feel with the lavender a lot of masculinity a, a kind of dirty cleanness it's it's a million miles away from fresh aquatic cleans type scents or things like neroli portofino it's miles away from all that or chanel Alurom sport versace Purum. but there's a certain bathroom deodorant gym locker room type feel about this one a masculine clean but a little bit dirty and a little bit manly rugged smell that's what you get with this one it's very hard to describe i wouldn't have noticed pineapple being in there i wouldn't have noticed much bergamot and lemon but um i'm not saying they're not in there but my overall impression is of a rugged masculine scent with some sweet fruitiness just kind of underlying the main theme of rugged, manly, hair on your chest type feel. Um, the tobacco note is probably in there, but it, it's not a noticeable tobacco note like the one you would get in um, t Tobacco of O'Neill by Tom Ford. Uh, it doesn't stand out as being obviously in there. I think either we can say this scent is a complete mess and none of the notes that are listed really come out because it's just all such a jumbled mess, or we might say it's so cleverly and well blended that it's really hard to pick out individual notes. So this is one of the hardest to describe and hardest scents that I've had to talk about and where for me to actually decide whether I like it, whether I would recommend it to people or not. What you've got is an uber masculine 80s powerhouse type scent. Recommendability rating on this one. I'm not gonna give it a rating because I haven't decided what I think totally yet. It's a first impressions video. But on, on recommendability, I think the recommendability to you people is relatively low, like a five out of 10 because it's um, a polarizing scent. It's very strong. You have to like retro scents and the performance is a little bit beastly. It's almost a little bit too beastly and it could annoy people. However, if you like things like Chorus, 
by Yves Saint Laurent. If you like Antaeus by Chanel, then you might like this. It's probably gonna be a blind buy for a lot of us because you don't see it in the shops to try it. So unless you know someone who's gonna give you a free small sample, you may have to take a risk and blind buy it. It's very cheap. It's around about 15 to 20 pounds here in the UK and similar equivalent prices around the world. That's for 100 mils, an odor toilet, but it has a reputation for beastly performance. And so far I'm getting that to a great extent. I know that a lot of you people actually do trust us reviewers uh, because I've seen people say on my videos, I've ordered this on the back of your video and you're blind buying things based on, on reviews, even by people like me. So I, I really thank people for putting their trust in me. Um, but as my ex-wife will tell you, that's often a big mistake. <laughs> So um, I don't want to go and rec recommend people that they have to have this. Lex Ellis said we all have to own it if we're interested in fragrances. I wouldn't quite agree with that. If you're really interested in powerhouse type scents though, this one is fascinating. It's great. I'm not going to wear it a lot out socially, I'll be honest, but I might wear it a few times now and again when I really want to enjoy, enjoy a retro scent and be completely different to everybody. I'm happy to have it in my collection as a collector because I think the bottle looks great. It is a benchmark of the powerhouse style and it's often talked about uh, as a reference point and really one of the strongest most masculine sense that you can still get today. I think it's been reformulated since 1987, but unlike Koros, which is believed to be something of a shadow of its former self now, most people agree this is still very powerful and still does uh, largely what it did back in 1987. So Lapidus Poron, the 80s powerhouse. Try it if you dare. I'm not recommending anyone to blind buy it, but it's a fascinating scent. I'm doing a beast mode top 10 soon, and you can be fairly sure this will be in there somewhere. Maybe not super high, because although the performance definitely seems to be beast mode, the scent is polarizing, and you might not like it. But if you like old-fashioned smells, and you're interested in the history of fragrances, then you probably will. Thanks for joining me. Remember, whatever we're doing in life, and especially this is going to be easy to do if we're wearing Lapidus Perome. Let's project. Bye-bye.